Hello, my name is Atifa and I welcome you all to the latest episode of Around the World in 7 Days. After registering its name among the fastest growing economies of the world, India has now become the fifth largest economy. Now only America, China, Japan and Germany are ahead of India in this context and India aspires to overtake them too one day. This is the reason there is hardly any country now that could make the mistake of ignoring India. The situation has become such that even a powerful group like G7 is giving a lot of attention to India. It is also engaged in pacifying India by inviting India to the dinner table. India has been invited to G7 conferences over five consecutive times since 2019. When France was hosting the G7 in 2019, it had invited India. After this, India was called in the 2020 event also, which was to be hosted by the US. The event was however cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Then, when the command reached to the United Kingdom in the year 2021, it too did not delay in sending an invitation to India. Germany also did not fall behind in this matter. And now that Japan is presiding over it on its invitation, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi went to Hiroshima, Nagasaki to attend the G7 meeting. In this way, India is seen as a permanent member of the G7 group as a guest country. The engagement comes at a time when India is already very busy. Actually, India is presiding over the G20 and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization for the year 2023. Now the question is, why has India become so important for the G7? What are the issues that make India essential for G7? Along with this, whether India can become a formal member of G7 in the coming time. So in this episode, we will talk about all these aspects. But first, let's understand that what is the G7 group? The G7 group is an organization of the world's seven largest developed economies. It is an informal group that includes Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the UK and the US. These member countries meet annually to coordinate global economic policy and address other international issues. Now if we talk about its history, in the year 1975, America, France, Italy, Japan, UK and the then West Germany together formed this group. Thus, at the time, it was an organization of six countries. The year after its formation, Canada also joined and since then it is known as G7. The purpose behind its creation was to provide a platform to non-communist countries on which they could address their economic concerns. Actually, these countries were troubled by inflation during that time and recession after the ban on oil exports by OPEC countries. Thus, the politics of the Cold War figured prominently in its agenda. From the year 1981 onwards, the European Union started its participation in the G7. However, it is not yet a member of the group. The President of the European Council has been attending its meetings from time to time. There are no formal criteria for the membership of G7, yet all its members are countries that are comparatively rich. The total GDP of this organization is about 44% of the global economy. However, this figure was around 70% three decades ago. Okay, now coming to our question, that why is India invited every time for G7 meetings? And why is India so important for the group? So, there are many reasons behind this. The first reason for this is India's growing influence and responsibility towards the world. This is the fact because of which G7 does not want to ignore India. Currently, India's GDP is around $2.66 trillion. In this sense, India's economy is bigger than the three member countries of the group, that is, France, Italy and Canada. According to the International Monetary Fund or IMF, India is one of the fastest growing economies in the world and it is expected to grow at a rate of around 5.9% in 2023-2024. Apart from this, India is also the fastest growing economy in Asia. According to the World Bank, India has the highest growth rate among the world's seven largest emerging markets and developing economies. And the second reason is that, along with America and Japan, European countries are formulating their policies to engage more with the Indo-Pacific region. 
In the last few years, Britain, France and Germany have formed their Indo-Pacific strategy. Italy has also recently shown its interest to join the Indo-Pacific region. In fact, in the present era, the focus of global geopolitics and economics has shifted to the Indo-Pacific region. In such a situation, these European countries are keen to take advantage of the economic opportunities present in this region. However, the Indo-Pacific has its own challenges, including China's expanding strategic and economic footprints. Because of this, India has emerged as a major strategic partner for Western countries to control China. It is worth noting that among the G7 members, India has a strategic partnership with US, UK, France, Germany and Japan. Whereas India's relations with Italy are also expanding rapidly in the strategic sector. At the same time, the world needs a responsible and great power like India instead of China. In fact, the attitudes of China and India are completely different in the emerging list of powerful countries. In fact, in the South China Sea, China is making its territorial claims with several countries, including the Philippines. The Philippines took the matter to the International Court of Justice. China's claim was rejected by the International Court of Justice in 2016, ignoring which it continued to build artificial islands around the Philippines. Such an attitude of China is challenging and existing international law. But on the other hand, if we look at India, in the year 2014, Bangladesh had taken the maritime dispute with India to the International Court of Justice. In this case, the court gave a decision in favour of Bangladesh. India's approach to this was clearly excellent and responsible. This clearly showed India's commitment to international laws. In such a situation, the G7 countries do not want China to become a superpower. That's why they need India to control China. Apart from all this, the inclusion of India in the G7 meetings shows the importance of the Global South for the member countries. Actually, this group is also focusing on the Global South. The US and China are competing for influence in the countries for the Global South. It intensified when Russia's aggression towards Ukraine was witnessed. During this, the G7 countries urged the international community to cooperate with sanctions against Russia. But despite this, most of the Global South countries ignored these sanctions. There is a traditional rift between the G7 and the Global South. This was seen more openly when in June 2022, Indian Foreign Minister Mr. S. Jaishankar, representing the mood in the Global South, said that Europe needs to get out of the mindset that Europe's problems are the world's problems, but the world's problems are not Europe's problems. Therefore, the G7 countries have started recognizing and valuing this region, especially under the chairmanship of Japan. Japan hosted several region sessions at the G7 foreign ministers' meeting in April 2023. This included sessions for Africa, Afghanistan and Central Asia, as well as Iran and the Middle East. Apart from these, Japan also organized a special session for Ukraine. In all these exercises, the G7 had also held a meeting for the Indo-Pacific region. If seen in this way, making India a partner in G7 is reflecting the opinion of the Global South. This is providing that India is a responsible democratic power. Therefore, India's participation will also promote the interests of the Global South countries. Well, whether the G7 will become aid by accommodating India as a member is something only time will tell. But it is certain that right now, India's support is essential for G7 to solve the challenges it is facing. So that's all in today's discussion. See you in the next episode. But before we leave, let's note down the practice question based on today's coverage. The G7 group needs India's support to maintain its relevance. Discuss.